In this lecture, we will discuss about the anatomy and specialized form of stem. The stem anatomy consists of three tissue system: dermal tissue, vascular tissue, and ground tissue. So let's discuss this tissue in detail. In case of dicot stem, the dermal tissue of stem consists of epidermis layer. It is protective in nature. It possesses stomata and large number of multicellular hair called trichomes. They help to reduce transpiration, means the loss of water by above ground plant pads. Also increase solar reflectance and defend the leaves against predation by herbivores. The outer layer are greatly thickened and cutinized. The cells are compactly arranged and do not possess intercellular spaces. Next is cortex. So cortex lies below the epidermis. It is differentiated into three zones. The first zone is hypodermis, journal cortex and endodermis. Hypodermis. Inside of epidermis, there is four to five cells, thick band of colonchyma. So what is colonchyma? They are elongated cells and provide structural support. The cells are alive at maturity. Due to this, Thickening, these cells are rigid and also hypodermis help in strengthening of tissue. Next is cortex. It is made up of large thin walled parenchymatic cells with intercellular spaces. So what is parenchyma cells? These cells are the most common plant cells. They are found in the stem as well as whole plant body. Parenchyma cells are responsible for metabolic functions such as photosynthesis. They also help in repairing and healing of wounds. Cortex help in a conduction of water and food. Next is endoderm. It is the innermost layer of cortex. It is made up of single row of compact barrel shaped cells without intercellular species. The cells of endoderm contain starch grain, so it is also known as starch sheath. It consists of Caspian strip. These strips are clearly visible in endodermal cells. So, what is Caspian strip? It is actually the band of cell wall material deposited in the radial and transverse wall of endoderm next okay next part is pericycle it lies below the endoderm it is formed of semi-lunar patches of calenchyma cell so what is calenchyma these cells also provide support to the plant but unlike calenchyma cells many of them are dead pericycle provide mechanical support to the plant and protects the vascular bundle so next is vascular bundle. Vascular bundles are arranged in a broken ring embedded in the thin wall cell. You can see in the picture. Each vascular bundle is normally differentiated into three layers lying on a common radius. If you look at the picture, you will find that the outer side there is a group of cells forming phloem while toward the center of the stem it is thick walled xylem. The two main xylem and phloem are connected by several thick strip of metastomatic tissue called cambium. So let's discuss uh, these uh, tissue. Next is xylem. It is the innermost layer of vascular bundle and lies toward the center of stem. Xylem consists of vessels, tracheates, wood fiber, and wood parenchyma. Phloem. It lies below the pericycle and is composed of seed tube, companion cells, and phloem parenchyma. The phloem cells store starch, protein, and fat. Next layer is cambium. It is a strip of thin walled cells lying in between the phloem and xylem. The function of cambium is to give rise by division and subsequent differentiation of its cells to xylem and phloem. Pith or medulla. 
It is the central part of stem, composed of parenchymatic cells with conspicuous intercellular species. Its main function is storage of food and transfer conduction of food material. It is absent in monocorp stem. Okay, and now uh, let's discuss about the internal structure of monocord and stem. Uh, the structure of monocotyledon stem is uh, fundamentally different from that of dicord stem. First one is epidermis. It is the outermost layer of stem. It is covered by a cuticle, but the epidermis here are absent. It is protective in nature. Next is hypodermis. It lies below the epidermis. It consists of two or three layers of current climatic cells. It provides support and strength to the stem. Next tissue is the ground tissue. It consists of a mass of thin walled parenchyma cells extending from below the hypodermis to the center of stem. It is not differentiated into a def defined tissue like cortex, endoderm, pericycle, etc., as in case of a dicot stem. The cells of a ground tissue have intercellular spaces. Vascular bundles are scattered in the ground tissue. You can see in the uh, picture. Okay, uh, regarding vascular bundles in monocot. The vascular bundles are not of the same size. They are smaller and more concentrated near the periphery, means near the boundary of cells, but larger and less concentrated toward the center. Sometimes the center of vascular bundle is occupied by parenchyma cell, which dry up and disappear at early stages, resulting in hollow stem. In case of monocot grasses, for example, wheat, maize, barley, and paddy. Paddy means rice. The absence of the cambium is connected with fact that monocotyledon plants do not have secondary thickening. Okay. Each vascular bundle is surrounded by a sheath of thick walled skeleton chyma cells called the bundle sheath. It provides protection and strength to the vascular bundle. Vascular bundles are conjoined, collateral, and close. Each vascular bundle is composed of xylem and phloem tissue. The primary structure of dicot and monocot stem show the following points of differentiation. Uh, in case of epidermis, the epidermis may be provided with trichomes, while in monocot, epidermis is always without trichome. Second point is vascular bundle. In case of dicot, vascular bundles are arranged in the form of ring, while in case of monocot, vascular bundles are scattered throughout the cell. Ground tissue in dicot differentiated into cortex, endoderm, pericycle, and pit. While monocord stem, no such differentiation is possible. You can see in the picture. Hypodermis. In dicot, the hypodermis is made up of colon chymatic cells. While in monocord, the hypodermis is made up of skeletal chyma. Pit and pit rays are present in dicot, whereas in monocord, both are absent. Secondary growth takes place in dicot. No secondary growth is present in monocot because there is no cambium. Okay students, now we will learn about the different uh, kind of specialized stems. Uh, we generally expect stems to be upright and above the ground. However, there are many stems that do not fit this mode. Some stems are modified to store food or to help the plant in reproduction. So let's discuss and these modified forms okay regarding underground modified stem the bulbs are underground condensed shoot or buds the stem which is very short and is known as this you can see in the picture it never grew above they are surrounded by numerous fleshy leaves the outer leaves are scaly and dry and protected the inner one Examples are onion, tulip, and lily. Next one is rhizomes. Rhizomes are horizontal stems that grow parallel and underground with adventitious roots. 
they have nodes and internodes. And each node, there is a brownish scaly leaf having birds in the axis. Example is are ferns and grasses. Next one is a tuber, a much thicken underground part of stem. For example, potato, serving as a food and bearing bud from which new plants arise. Regarding corn, some plants, for example, calocasia or gladiolus, store reserve food in the stem, giving rise to solid structure known as corn. These structures are spherical and resemble with bulb, but composed of entirely of stem tissue surrounded by a few papery scale like leaves. Okay, next is subaerial modifier stem. Uh, Drenner is the subaerial modifier stem for vegetative propagation. It is a creeping stem with long internodes running horizontally on the soil surface. The node bear axillary bud, scale leaves, and adventitious root. A runner actually arises from an axillary bud, remember. Runner break off and grow into new individual plants and help in vegetative propagation. Example, strawberry. Next modified forms are tendrils. These are actually aerial stem. Stem bordered branches get modified into green thread like leaflet structure called tendrils, which are also used for climbing purpose. They may be branched or unbranched. For example, grapes, phylloclades, they are fleshy green flattened or cylindrical branches of unlimited growth. The leaves are modified into spine or scales to check the transpiration. They also take part in photosynthesis and store food. Students, if you look at the lower right picture, you will see the cactus plant. Actually, the plants have become flattened into leafless structure. These structures are called fellow clades. okay regarding food storage stems some plants store food in their stem for example asparagus and sugar cane these all are about anatomy and specialized form of stem hope students you have understood the lecture if you have any question we can discuss it in our question answer session thank you